In today's Urbandum video, we are exploring Preston's shuttered Guildhall complex, a defunct shopping mall with multiple leisure facilities that has been mothballed since 2019. Three years ago, we ventured within the property to find it part active, with some businesses still operating inside. The highlights were untouched, with functioning electricity, expensive equipment and running water. Join us as we explore the structure to see it in its standstill condition. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. Dating back to the 1970s, the Brutalist building was originally destined to be a replacement for Preston's Town Hall. However, it soon opened as an entertainment venue with two performance halls, a small shopping area and various nightclubs. Since closure in 2019, the building was left in a mothballed state. Flashback to late 2020, and after catching wind of the site's demise, we were stood in its upper floors, gazing over the quiet streets of the city, curious to see what remained in the large facility. Walking through the retail areas, it was clear that certain spaces, mostly offices, were still being used, we would assume by the council. There were signs that members of the public were no longer allowed into the complex, like fencing in the atrium, even though a direct connecting passage from the bus station exists. Therefore, we strayed away from these nerve-wracking regions, particularly the lower floors, and headed straight for the leisure parts that we had concluded were out of use. Holy shit. What in the world? Wow, this is pretty incredible. With some of the guild halls still active, the power worked throughout, including the atmospheric lighting in the larger hall. Besides that, the stunning room was silent, nothing besides the hum of electricity and our distanced footsteps echoed around the room. Thinking about it, there are so many seats in here. This was a 2000 seat in venue. And they had all this wooden space here for floor seats and then these ones at the side, which would come out too if they needed them. It's crazy. Crazy, we just noticed that the heating's still on in here. Wondering why we're not cold in December. Looks like some sort of control room over there. Probably where they manned all the equipment for plays and whatever they perform to get up there. I can actually see a projector. Wow, all the controls are just left, sound, lights, probably music, Jesus Christ, this is ridiculous. This control room was the first we saw of the perfectly conditioned equipment in the structure. A lot of it seemed as if it could be switched on ready for a live show in a heartbeat. Look 
this projector. It's not an old one, but still pretty cool. Like, I bet it works, you know. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> wow, as if this was just left. I mean, maybe it will be stripped out and sold off at a later date, but right now it's left. <laughs> Jesus. That is crazy. weirdest catwalk I've ever been on because of the strange shape of the stage. No more than two men standing on a single ceiling panel, I'm not surprised. This is going to get us a great view though. The Grand Hall could contain more than 2,000 people at full capacity, having witnessed some legendary acts over its 30 years in use. Huge names like Michael Jackson and the Jackson 5, David Bowie, Led Zeppelin, Morrissey and Busted, a few of many to perform in the majestic space. As well as music, there are an unlimited spectrum of events that took place in the Guildhall, notably the UK Snooker Championships between 1978 and 1997. Until 2014, the site was owned by Preston Council, who were struggling to keep it afloat because of high maintenance fees. Inevitably, it was sold to a local businessman who promised to spend more than £1 million to bring it back to its heyday. Five years later, the owner closed the venue in 2019, placing his business into administration. 20 staff were laid off. Consequently, the council reclaimed the premises, upset by the behaviour of the owner, who had effectively killed off the iconic venue. These are the dressing rooms apparently. The coat stand. Just seating for them. Probably relaxation area before the show. A little refreshment fridge in the corner. That's where the magic happened. Very modern, not really too interesting, but I guess they're worth showing. These are the kitchens, completely untouched. It's freaky. Like, there's still oil in the chip fryer. Christ. Look at all these plates and mugs and stuff stacked up perfectly from the final day they were washed. It's these sort of rooms that make you think that this place will just be repurposed and it's not going to be abandoned for very long. There are so many plates. Jesus. I've never seen such a stocked cupboard. <laughs> yeah, literally. It's like a little restaurant with a bar. I can actually see so many drinks are in there, but Coke, loads of alcohol, J2O. Pretty cool.
After peering at the main hall and its surrounding kitchens, dressing rooms and bars, it was time to cross the structure to see its second hall. Apparently this is the entrance to a theatre. Oh shit. Wow, that old safety curtain. It's very modern in here, but it's still pretty cool. A smaller room, but with a different layout than the Grand Hall, the Charter Theatre could hold almost 800 spectators. With its seats in immaculate condition, it was another defining moment of the exploration, as we just couldn't comprehend that somewhere so structurally sound could stay abandoned for long. These small spaces at the back, almost like private viewing. Maybe if someone a bit too special was coming to watch. A bit of a raised view on the, the stage. This is a control desk at the bottom half of the auditorium. Oh shit. I see what's happening. They've got the projector screen to come down. Oh my god. It's gonna take a long time for it to get down. It's very noisy. I guess that shows that as well as plays, they'd also have um, films going on here. Definitely wouldn't be main, main stage films though. This is creepy as. It's almost like The Shining. It's a small little bar. There's one above I saw, but I knew this one was down here. And this one's much nicer. Holy shit. There's hundreds of pounds of alcohol here and just regular drinks. Some are looking a bit worse than others. The abundance of alcohol and sound equipment is the main reason we held on to this property until now, before sharing it. Access wasn't difficult in 2020, with no security measures, and it wouldn't have taken much for the wrong person to get inside. We would imagine that most of the stuff of interest to thieves would have been removed by now, or in storage. The view from up here. I like that bit of wood coming down above the screen. Just like in the, the main room, they had a lot of lights in here too. And some more seating, some projector rooms up there. Looks like multiple. Definitely go have a look. But I'm doubting there'd be anything old. I feel like this is quite an unsafe way of getting onto that catwalk. There's a huge light up there that would have been manned. This one doesn't look like a projector room. Not sure, I mean... I don't know, just by the windows, but the equipment in here is still pretty cool. It's all like the sound and lighting. There's a ton of wires over there, some um, CD players. There's definitely no projectors in here anyway.
It was getting late, and as simple as the infiltration had been, it's always tense in a part active building, so we were just about finishing up and preparing to depart. It had been a very special documentation for us, and something that we haven't seen anything like since. Dressing room 7. It's huge. The ones we found earlier were mere nothing compared to these. It sucks that the, um, the side lights have been removed. Shows that they're stripping it. Since closure, a lengthy court process was ongoing with the legal authorities deeming that breaches of the owner's lease had occurred through mothballing the complex. The owner unfortunately passed away in 2020, but the trial was held between his estate, the council, and multiple companies involved in the building. Recently announced, the council are confident that the important property will be back in use again this year, which is brilliant news. It didn't seem right to us that the two performance venues should be out of use, both virtually unscathed and ready to go again. It is only a shame it has taken this long for action to take place. It will be great to see the Guildhall functioning once more, but we are glad we were able to showcase a small bump in its plentiful history. Here are some photographs from the abandoned leisure complex. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description, where we share images from our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed one of our many videos filmed a long time ago, and it didn't disappoint. See you next time.